This video explains how buck converters work on common ink 6060 strip or 3030 strip. First, let's start off with traditional strip. A traditional strip is a 3010 strip. That means that in one full meter, which is about 39 inches, we're going to have 30 LEDs. And in this particular case, this is 3010, so we have 10 ICs per meter. So what this means is that this section, which has one, two, three LEDs, is one pixel. Now, this works out really well because 12 volts in this case comes down the line and it's run in series, somewhat in the way that you have traditional Christmas lights that run off of high voltage. And because the voltage is in series, that adds up each of the voltage requirements for each chip. That means that the dropping voltage is lower across these three LEDs. This is why you commonly see items like 4816 and 3010 strip because they're multiples of three. Now, in this particular case, um, we have 6060 strip. Now, this means that every single pixel in this strip is individually controllable. Now, that means that we don't have groups of three anymore. That means that each one of these needs a low voltage power input to it. Well, that voltage is closer to 5 volts, not 12 volts. But if we ran it at 12 volts, I mean at 5 volts, we would lose power as we get towards the end of the string. So, there's a compromise that's going on here. And that is that we're going to run it at 12 volts, but we're going to use something called a buck converter. A buck converter is on the back of the strip, so here's the front with the LEDs. And then on the back, periodically, we're going to see this little piece of componentry. This is going to be taking the 12 volts from the strip and converting it to 5 volts, which is where the pixels need their voltage at. Because the pixels are not running at 12 volts, not even on 3010 strip. So, how this works is, is that we have power wires coming in here. In this particular case, the outer wires here are positive and negative, and then we have a data wire. Now, you may notice that there's an additional pad here, and it is, if you were able to see, marked as 5V, or 5 volts. But the wire is actually only connected to the 12V. What's happening is, is that the outer rails in this, if you will, are carrying 12 volts. The pixels are not using the 12 volts. What's happening is, is the 12 volts going down the line, and it lands on this buck converter. The buck converter is tied to these two lines on the 12 volts. Then what it does is it takes the 12 volts, converts it to 5 volts, and then puts it back onto the line on the 5 volt line. So if we were to power this on the 12 volts here, and we were to measure between the, 12, the 5 volt and the ground, we would see 5 volts. So the 5 volts is coming from the buck converter. Now, why does all this matter? It matters because you need this buck converter. Now, you could run this strip with 5 volts by simply attaching 5 volts here, and the strip will work fine. But then you lose the advantage of running it at 12 volts. So, how do you manage that? Well, it can be a little tricky. So, first thing you need to understand is that these are built-in sections. So, if we look down the strip, here's the beginning of the strip, so if we go down the strip, you see there's a buck converter, and then if we keep going down the strip, we'll see that there's another buck converter. Now, if we back up a little bit, about halfway, so we're now halfway to the buck converter here, right, from here to here, and from here down to the end of the strip is the beginning. Now, there's a splice point in this strip, and it's right here. If we flip the strip over, and it may be hard to see in this video, but what we have is we have a solder joint. We have three wires that are, or three sections of pads on this strip that are soldered. One of them is not, and it is the 5 volt line. Now, why is that? It's because we want 12 volts to go the entire length of the strip because we have additional buck converters further down the line. Now, we also need the data line connected because it transfers data the entire length of the strip to go to each of the pixels. Now, the reason the 5 volt is not connected, or soldered in this case, is because this buck converter right here only powers this section of lights. 
And in this particular case, it is 30 LEDs. Now, this will vary by vendor. So, what this means is that you will need to, if you cut the strip, only cut it so that you have um, sections that have a buck converter in them. In other words, if we were to take this strip here with the buck converter and we were to cut it prior to the buck converter, this strip will do nothing unless we power it from 12, uh, 5 volts. It requires a buck converter. So, that means you need a buck converter in this particular case of this strip. You'll need one buck converter soldered to the back of this strip every 30 LEDs. Now, this could vary if you have, for example, 30-30 strips running on 12 volts you may have a different arrangement or your vendor may have a different combination. So look at your strip before it's cut up and note where the buck converter is. You will see a spot typically where the buck converter stops injecting power and the next buck converter powers the next section. So keep all these things in mind when you are using 6060 or 3030 strip that is 12 volts and has buck converters. This is also, in general, why we recommend, unless you have a specific need, try to stay away from 6060 or even 3030 strip because often these are less expensive. You can cut them at any point without having to worry about buck converters. And often, if you have an appropriate distance, let's say 50 feet or more, you will never even notice the difference between 3030 and 3010 strip, for example. So, this is how you handle buck converters on 6060 and 3030 strip.